the greater majority of the crew with the exception of flying to New Zealand this year. It's our first long haul flight in 20 months and we can just say that it's been an absolute pleasure to carry you on board today. G'day One Wall Flyer Squad, welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Sydney International Terminal and today I'm flying Qantas Airbus A330 business class all the way to Singapore. Um, flying internationally has been, well, it's going to be a lot more challenging nowadays. You have to do COVID tests and prepare lots of documents and I'm going to go through all that within this trip report. Now first thing, we have to do COVID tests. If you're flying out from Sydney International Airport, there's a COVID test clinic just outside the departure hall. You can obviously do a COVID test in the city or in any clinics near your home, but I prefer to do it at the airport because why not? It's just outside the check-in area. So yeah, that was the COVID test. I believe you can actually walk in, but I do recommend booking in case it gets busy there. Um, so you can do the PCR or the rapid antigen test when you go to Singapore. Obviously I did a rapid one, it's cheaper, it's $50 here. So right now I'm just gonna sit near the check-in area for Qantas, waiting for my test results to come back. I was told that it should take about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, now I'm going to go through the documents that you'll need to enter Singapore, so um, I've got a file here. The first page is your international COVID-19 vaccination certificate. Um, you can get that online from MyGov, but if you're not Australian like me, you'll have to present yourself to Medicare Centre. Um, you don't need that for Singapore, but some countries require to have that. That's the um, vaccine record you get from your clinic or vaccination hub digital certificate that's the one you have your uh, that you have on your iPhone uh, that's just a immunization history statement you don't need that but nice to have it with you insurance you must have insurance for um, Singapore has to cover COVID-19 for at least thirty thousand dollars Singaporean dollars um, need a test here at um, in Australia before you fly but um, vaccination travel pass, the VTP, you need to apply that no less than seven days before you fly to Singapore. Again, no less than seven days. And you also have to book your arrival test in Singapore. So after you land, you need to do another one. You have to uh, prepay for that as well. So yeah. And one more thing, um, about two days before your departure to Singapore, you need to do that arrival card with your health declaration and you do that online now because you know in the good old days you do that on the plane they give you that paper to fill it in uh, you don't do that anymore you do it online two days before you fly so it's been exactly half an hour since i got the test and i got this on my email negative I'm just back in the clinic to pick up my result in a uh, hard copy. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. See you later. Have a good day. We'll yep. All good. Before you step into the Qantas check-in area, the staff will ask whether you're vaccinated or not, and then you can proceed to another counter where they check all your documents for Singapore, and then finally another counter to actually do that check-in and bag drop. The whole check-in process here took about 10 minutes. And that's despite a very quiet morning here at Sydney Airport for Qantas. So I recommend arriving really early for your international flights nowadays. So I just checked in. It took longer than usual, but all worth it because now I've got my boarding pass and I'm ready to go to um, overseas. Now I'm going to go through immigration and security. So immigration was really fast. I used the e-gates, so that took like 10 seconds. Security took longer than usual because a lot of people forgot about the international rules. So I just went into the TRS, the Tourist Refund Scheme, to get my tax refund for my, you know, shopping. Conveniently, it's located opposite Gate 10, where my Singapore flight's going to depart from. So our aircraft today to Singapore is a 16-year-old Qantas Airbus A330-300 Victor Hotel, Quebec Papa Hotel. It's wearing the newer Qantas livery. 
Well, we'll come back here later, because now let's go to the Qantas First Class Lounge. So normally with a business class ticket, you're only allowed to use the Qantas International Business Class Lounge. But due to COVID and not many people are flying yet, Qantas has only reopened the First Class Lounge. And anyone who's eligible to use the Business Lounge are now allowed to use the First Class Lounge. The moment I went into the lounge, the waiter said hi to me and invited me to the restaurant area. So here's a quick look at the breakfast menu. In the first class lounge today, all customers are flying to Singapore and headcount 21. So here's my breakfast, I got a chai latte as usual and a brioche sandwich with cheese and leg ham. And again, that's our aircraft to Singapore, the 787 next to it. One of them is going to Brisbane, another one is going to London tonight. The amount of ham is really, really generous. And here's a United 787 coming in from San Francisco. And that's a Cathay A350-900 coming in from Hong Kong. My friend just joined me from Melbourne and he's got a kale salad with like feta cheese, eggs and a lot of other fancy stuff. And of course we got some breakfast champagne. That's flying to, oh, where's it flying after Brisbane? This aircraft is now pushing back for Brisbane, Queensland. It's just a short one hour domestic flight and I think it could be either a freight or a repositioning flight. Behind the Dreamliner, a Singapore Airlines A350-900 flying to Singapore. Here's a quick look at the lavatory here in the first class lounge. It's quite nice, almost like a room and importantly it's got... Coke. Time flies and now it's time to go to our gate for Singapore, gate 10 today. We're now at a boarding gate area and it's really quiet here, suggesting a really empty flight. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. 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 This goal goes by to see the focus on that <laughs> no side. Worries. Mr. Wong, nice to have you yes, around the corner here on the left yeah, hand thank side. Thank you. you. Welcome on board Qantas Airbus A330 300, seat number 6A, a window seat by the window, not the aisle. Welcome drinks are offered as soon as I settle down at my seat. We've got sparkling water and champagne. So I already drank in the lounge, so I'm just getting a sparkling water. Here's the brand new Qantas Amenity Kit celebrating the 100 year anniversary. A bottle of water is ready for you on this long haul flight, as well as a headphone, that's noise cancelling. On your seat, you'll also find a pillow, a mattress and a blanket. Amazing Kayla, from the seat back attached from the takeoff. Now time to switch your phone and any other devices to flight mode. You're welcome to use any handheld device during takeoff, but laptops and other large devices need to be put away until we're in the air. Pushback is on time. And here's our view today from 6A. Unfortunately, the takeoff footage will be a bit blurry because I have trouble focusing on the outside.
driver's seat as much as possible in the direction of flight, do not change seats. No more than two customers should queue in the, in the aisle for the lavatories, and galley areas are to be avoided. Please maintain distance between yourself, other customers, and the crew where possible. For your safety, we don't allow any including children to sleep on the floor. If you lose your electronic device any time, it's important you don't move your seat as this could severely damage your device and may be a fire hazard. Please contact your crew member who will be able to help recover your device. I'll now go through the seat features on this business class seat. So you've got a touchscreen TV, plenty of leg room. I don't know what the hell this is, apparently a cook, and then a seat pocket, and now they've brought back magazines on board, which is amazing. Here you've got seat control buttons, storage space, plenty of room, and reading light. And then USB port, universal power socket, and a headphone jack. You've got a mirror there and a TV remote controller you can use that when you recline your seat when you're like too far away from the TV and finally your tray table it's easy to pull it out you can also move it back and forth now that the seat belt sound is off I'm gonna recline my seat here's the menu on board today's flight after takeoff, there'll be a lunch including starter, main and dessert. Halfway through the flight, there'll be some snacks and a light refreshment before landing into Singapore. Half an hour after we took off from Sydney, the cabin crew came around the cabin to take me orders in business class. While I wait for my meal, I'm watching today's Australian news. So for the drink service, I got a Duval Lohra champagne and some almonds. This was given to us about 40 minutes after the orders were taken. I like champagne, but this one is a bit too bubbly for me. Are you happy with the champagne? Yeah, I'm trying to change to red wine, white wine. I'm good with that, thank you. It's very nice. that she offered me more drinks. Try some soda dressing. This nail berries, palm sugar vinaigrette. Sure, that's fair. Right. So here's the meal tray, the start is going to come a few minutes later, so I've got a white bread, some salad with some nice dressing, and here's the actual starter. A zucchini and basil soup with parmesan crute. The crute has got some cheese on it, mixing it with the soup, and oh my god, so delicious. The salad with a special nail peri dressing was also super super good. And now here comes the main. I ordered the sandwich of slow cooked chipotle lamp with sweet onions, mint salsa, salted chili. It comes with a basil leaf. It was incredibly delicious, the bread itself was crunchy and the flavouring was really good. For dessert there are four options and I went for a vanilla cream caramel as well as a Maggie beer chocolate ice cream. Basically the two least healthiest options. Welcome on board Qantas A330 300 business class lavatory. Here's the one behind the business class cabin near door 2 in front of economy class. Pretty, pretty decent size, not too bad. Amenity wise, nothing too special. But there is one, well, two bottles of branded hand wash as well as a standard one. Uh, note that it's usually. Um, two lavatories in business class but on today's flight the one behind the cockpit is only for the crew and here we've got two cookbook we're about five and a half hours away from singapore now i'm going to recline my seat because i want a good day nap before covid the cabin crew would be more than happy to make your bed put up your mattress etc but 
due to COVID and all that, you have to do that all yourself now. But the crew is happy to stand next to you and tell you what to do exactly. And just before I went to bed, the cabin crew came for another drink service and they also gave out lint chocolate balls. The mood lighting in business class is quite beautiful during the day. Let me quickly show you what's new about the amenities kit. So not just the outside, the inside the content is also all new. There's eye shade, eye mask, toothbrush, some creams and lotions. One thing I absolutely love about the new kit is that there's no disposable plastics. I tried to sleep for a bit but it wasn't successful and now it's mid-flight service. So on the tray there's fruits, chocolate and some crisp. I went for a lint chocolate bar. We're now leaving the coastline of the continental of Australia. I'm going to miss you so much Australia. And now let's try to sleep again and this time it was successful. I just slept for a really good two hours and now we're flying over Indonesia. Gonna quickly go to the lavatory, have a look in the galley what's available. So some fruits left, lots of drinks including alcohol, a pack of crisp left. In just a few minutes, the cabin crew switched on the mood lighting and they're going to begin the pre-arrival service. What would you normally do on a daytime long haul flight? Are you going to sleep? Are you going to watch a TV or something? Let me know in the comment down below. So there are two options for your pre-arrival meal. Here's the quiche. Second option is the ham and cheese toasty or the menu says cook monsieur. And for the drinks I went for a dessert wine very delicious. The quiche is a little bit too watery or wet but it was still pretty good. When you don't move your seats as this could severely damage your device and may be a fire hazard. Please contact a crew member who will be able to recover your device. It's now time to put away all laptop computers and other large personal electronic devices away. Make sure your bags are in the overhead lockers or under the seat in front of you. So we've now begun to descend into Singapore Changi. So let's quickly conclude this trip with Qantas right here, right now. So first of all, I really hope that the information about the pre-departure stuff was helpful for you, especially if you're going to travel overseas soon. Changi Airport has a very useful website called the Safe Travel Concierge. It includes a checklist of documents that you need to prepare flying from a specific country like Australia. It could be different to Hong Kong, for example. So I recommend having a look at that if you're flying to Singapore anytime soon. The COVID test at Sydney Airport was pretty straightforward. I strongly recommend booking in advance. And then when you got your result back through your email, go back to the clinic and get a hard copy. So now about the Qantas experience, check-in was quite easy. Now there's more document checks and stuff, but it was pretty much straightforward. The staff knew what they were doing and must I say they were super super friendly. A lot of them were excited to be back in the international terminal working and they were all super helpful and patient and it was just so fantastic and what a great start to our Qantas journey today. After checking in I proceeded to the immigration that took less than a minute. Security took quite a while despite the shock queue because a lot of passengers forgot about what you could not bring for international flights because in Australia domestic flights is a lot more lenient like you can bring liquid no matter how much there is and then you know on international flights wherever you are you can't bring anything over 100 milliliter in a single container even myself got caught out like it was just so embarrassing and then I went to the Qantas first class lounge the staff there again very welcoming and friendly the waiter and I had quite a bit of a conversation going on. He told me that there are only 21 passengers today in business class or holding an eligible frequent flight card on our flight in the lounge. And interestingly, he told me that 
when Australia opened to New Zealand early in the year. Everyone had to do a COVID test every single day and he's so incredibly happy now because everyone's vaccinated, they don't need to do the COVID test anymore and I'm so happy for them actually. And then at the boarding gate, the gate agent was friendly as you can see and the cabin manager gave us a really warm welcome on board as well. Welcome drink offered as soon as we settled down at this seat and the service today was quite formal but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Between services the cabin crew actually came down to the cabin giving out more drinks and snacks and had conversations with the passengers. The catering today was really really good I was quite impressed. The sandwich was delicious. The quiche before arrival had a weird texture to it but still very delicious. Some small observations I made was that there's mood lighting in business class but not in economy class and that there's no more music selection on the entertainment system so if you want to listen to the music throughout the flight you better download Spotify or Apple Music before your departure. And now importantly the seat was really comfortable. I was sitting at the window seat by the window so rolls 2, 4 and 6 are like that. The odd numbers rolls have the seats by the aisle. And for those who are curious today in business class we have about 13 passengers plus one well behaved and quiet baby so that's about half full in the business class cabin whereas in economy class it was about 10 to 20 percent full so overall it was a relatively comfortable flight for everybody on board for your information if you want to fly one way from sydney to singapore on Qantas business class you're looking to pay about two thousand three hundred dollars one way slightly cheaper if you're doing it return by two hundred dollar one way about four thousand two hundred dollars return and today I didn't have that much money so I used Cathay Pacific Asia Miles for this flight. So thank you so much One What Flyers Squad, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And after landing I will show you the arrival process into Singapore so keep watching and I'll see you later. Welcome to Singapore, where the local time is 4.26pm. As the seatbelt sign is still on, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. Smoking and use of e-cigarettes is not permitted while disembarking or throughout the terminal. Just a reminder, carry-on baggage may have moved in the overhead lockers and could fall out, so please take care. Don't forget to check your seat and seat pocket for any personal items. You must continue to wear a face mask as you exit the aircraft and in the terminal building. Please take all leftover masks or wipes with you and dispose in the general waste bins. Once the seatbelt sign is off where possible, please maintain appropriate distance between yourself and other customers as you disembark. If you can reach your mobile phone, you can now turn off flight mode. And 
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all of you at Qantas, my word, I thank you for choosing to fly with us today. For the greater majority of the crew, with the exception of flying to New Zealand this year, it's our first long haul flight in 20 months, and we can just say that it's been an absolute pleasure to carry you on board today. If you are visiting Singapore, we hope you enjoy your stay. And those returning home, welcome home. So from here onwards, you and I will be so impressed by Singapore Changi Airport with how efficient they are with the VTL arrival flight process. So it's a short walk from our flight to the immigration hall. There are about three flights of passengers here, including our flight from Sydney and a British Airways flight from Heathrow. So in less than five minutes we've passed through immigration where the officer also checked our vaccination status and our VTP, the vaccinated travel pass. And then now we're at oh, the baggage sorry. reclaim. I almost forgot to do it. <laughs> I did it last time. Next you have to register for your COVID test, which you've already paid for. After that, before the COVID test, you need to go through custom. And now you'll have to do a PCR test. So this PCR test is slightly different to the ones in Australia. The cotton bud is shorter and they don't go as deep. And as a result, it's more comfortable than the other ones. And just like that, from disembarking to the arrival pickup hall, it took 22 minutes. From Changi Airport to the hotel, you must take private hire car, someone to pick you up or catch a taxi. You must not take public transport. My friend and I are staying at the Hilton Singapore and they have a very strict protocol as well. We legit check in outside the hotel, enter through the hotel and into our room through the freight area. So welcome to my hotel room. We're currently in isolation until we get our negative result back. We're not even given a key because we're not supposed to go out obviously. So, coffee stuff, tea stuff and then the bathroom. It's quite old fashioned but pretty nice. We've got two beds and a guaylo. Did you already sit on my bed? No. Oh, I was trying to hide. A little wrinkly. <laughs> and then the view. There you go. Hello. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned. 